So Andrew Jones, MP obviously for Harrogate and also Minister for Transport, the uh, TIPEX, TANKEX show is crucially important to, uh, to this sector. What have been your uh, first impressions of seeing the show this morning? Firstly, it's great to see the show here in Harrogate and I hope everybody here has a really happy visit, a very successful visit as well. And uh, from a transport minister's perspective, it's fantastic to, to visit everything here, partly because there are so many issues in this industry and everybody's here. I can talk to lots of people, hear their uh, concerns firsthand, provide some answers. The key thing for me is actually to listen and to learn and being able to see all the developments that are taking place as well. So it's a very valuable visit from my perspective. Sure. Obviously, it's a sector here at, at Tipex and Tankex. It's very much about bulk haulage, it is. led a lot by yeah. the construction sector. So obviously the work that the government's doing around infrastructure and infrastructure development is so important. Can you tell us a little bit about where the plans are, how things start to uh, roll out from here? Well, we haven't, as a country, delivered as much infrastructure as we should have done over many, many years. And that applies to governments of both colours. We've had this stop-start approach to infrastructure delivery and it's held our country back. So we need to deliver capacity into all modes of transport and we need to do it as soon as we can. So that's why we have our road investment strategy, that's a £15 billion set of schemes up and down the country. And if we focus upon that, because that obviously matters most for, for this, this show here, what, we've, what we're seeing is a, 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 really a desire to get back to some of the uh, constant steady drip of investment which allows people to be able to plan their journeys with greater predictability. That, that's a key thing. You know, I've come from a commercial background into Parliament. I know that uh, when I was, we had to deliver at a certain time to our customers. Therefore, predictability of journey was absolutely fundamental. And that's something which has been lost over the years as we have failed to keep pace with the investment that other countries have been making. So the government recognises this. We're allocating £15.2 billion of cash to the current road investment strategy. We'll be talking about comparable amounts of money for future spending periods as well. So we're trying to get out of that. And that should be, I think, a message that is positive for everybody here. Truck safety and the protection of vulnerable road users is one of the key themes here today. I know there's been a lot of work that government's doing in this area. Perhaps you can expand on that for us? Well, the issue of road safety is actually paramount. But let's, let's start by putting things into a pretty firm perspective. We have some of the safest roads in the world. Uh, and what we are trying to do is make them safer again. And we actually have got, uh, still however, about 1,750 people die on our country's roads each year. And that is a terrible statistic. We know that there are certain areas of road safety which have not been quite as successful as others in, in improvements. And one of those areas is for cyclists and that interaction between HGVs and cyclists. So it's very good to see, and obviously we're talking about the people turning left uh, and the visibility for the guys in, in, who are driving the, the trucks. So it's great to see actually some of the product advances that are actually uh, coming to help people, to help the truckers see things, give them improved uh, sight lines either in the vehicle or cameras into the, into the cab itself. So I think the industry has a huge role to play and, and building upon the success that we've had within our country over many, many years. The government is keen to help here. We published a road, uh, road safety strategy uh, only last December and that has got a variety of different initiatives within it. Um, but part of this, I think, has actually been to separate out uh, the cyclist from the HGV wherever possible. So that means more investment in cycle lanes. It means potential investment in different types of junctions to give cyclists a little bit of a, uh, an earlier start to get away from the, the front of a queue. So there are, there are a number of issues which are, are uh, eligible for or, and the government is seeking to take forward. But it's a partnership, that's the key thing here, it is a partnership. And we want to capture the, the, uh, the innovation uh, and the creativity that you see from this sector. Sure. And air quality also are all related in this sort of urban, uh, uh, urban issues for logistics. I think that's in your remit as well, it, it, so maybe it, a few comments is. around uh, air quality. Well, the, the issue has really risen up the political agenda and I think it's partly to do with the VW scandal which put it firmly on the top of the news for day after day after day. But, and that's right, it is there. You know, we have made good progress on tackling carbon in our country, but that's been potentially at the expense of NOx. We now need to have a much more comprehensive approach on air quality that tackles carbon, NOx and also particulates. Again, we've seen progress. You know, the Euro 6 engine is a significant improvement on the Euro 5. But uh, it's that partnership point again, isn't it? We can't have progress unless we see engineers deliver good quality products. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The government is certainly going to be supportive of that, and I want us to have good quality uh, 
uh, in all of our towns and cities, but at the same time we can't uh, think that we can do this without making our cities um, easy to places to work. Uh, so HGVs, buses, everybody's going to have to focus upon air quality improvements uh, to continue to do the work they do. Sure. And I can't let you go without some comments around the Brexit. Are you a Brexiteer? I am not a Brexiteer, no. I think that our world is becoming ever more international, also at the same time ever more insecure. I do not think this is the time to be heading off on some kind of uncharted, solitary route. Uh, I think we should be in the EU and I think we benefit strongly. We have a much more secure future, secure in terms of economy and secure in terms of our actual safety as well by being a part of the EU. So I am a strongly Remain person. And I have to say that has been a very clear voice from some of the stands that I've been uh, visiting this morning. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you.